Hi everyone, it's Rob here and I'm back with another Unity tutorial. And today I'm going to be going over how to use get components in children in order to access children components in game objects. You'll see here I have my parent game object and I have three children objects. And our objective today is to access this box collider property or component on these three children game objects. So how would we do this? Well, we're going to jump over here to our scripts folder, and I'm going to double click and open this up. So you'll see here I have a get component script. Now this could be any arbitrary name. This is just the script name that you would set once the script is created. And following that, I have a public box collider array, which I've named box calls. Now in my start function here, where I initialize my variables, I've set box calls equal to get components in children's bo in children box collider. So this right here is what we're focused on, get components and children. And what is this going to do? Well, this is going to allow us to access all of those box colliders on our children cubes. So as you'll see here, I've written two functions. These are custom functions, void enable child components, and void disable child components. And enable child components for each box collider call and box calls. This is a for each loop, basic programming construct. And basically what this is saying is that for each box collider, which we've chosen the name call in our box calls array, uh, we're going to set, we're going to enable them. And for ev if we're going to disable our children child components, then for each box collider call and box calls, we're going to set uh, enabled equal to false. And I've chosen to toggle this with the Q and W keys. So if I hit Q, all the children components are going to be enabled. If I hit W, all the children box collider components are going to be disabled. So going back to Unity in the scene view, I'll start our game here. I'll hit play. So I'll hit Q. And as we look at these, we'll see that our box colliders are on our game objects. I'll go back to the child one object and I'll hit W. Right? And you'll notice there's no change there. That's because I had still selected this panel. As soon as I jump back into my game view and I click inside of my game view, now I can toggle this on and off. Uh, please look up over here in the right hand corner to where it says box collider and note this checkbox is being turned on and off. Now if I turn it off, you'll notice it's off for the other two. Because what I've done is I've attached this script to the parent game object and now it automatically fills this array in with the information that I've provided it in my script where I initialized it. So this is already automatically filled in, right, by, because, because of the script that I wrote. And now what we could do here is we could just sit here and toggle back and forth based on if we're pressing Q or W with the script that I wrote. So again, this is how we could use get components in children in order to access the components here. Uh, and here you'll see just in the scene view, I have the three, so these are the three children components. And the parent is actually an empty game object. But it doesn't matter what type of game object the parent is. What matters is that we have a script that calls get components in children. And that this has some sort of children with some sort of similar game component. Uh, where we can make an array of that game object like I did here. Make an array of a certain type of game object. And then what we do is we initialize it and then we do something to those components and one of the cool programming constructs is the for each loop which actually enables us to iterate through the items in a sequence right so an array is, works perfectly here and we just state the type custom name of the single component in and then our um our array right here the name of our array and then down here, we're referencing the individual component, what we want to do to that component, and what the result of that is. So, for example, we're enabling uh, the collider, or collider.enabled, and we're setting that to true. Down here, we're setting that to false. The reason I've written uh, the code in functions is because this keeps the code uh, modular and encapsulated. And those are two uh, key uh, keywords in computer science. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make sure that this code is able to be reused as much as possible and that the details of this code are known to these functions which are called so we don't have to put copy and paste this functionality into here because this one line of code takes the place of this entire function thanks for watching guys please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next tutorial